parallel lines run parallel to each other, meaning they never cross each other, okay? Now what we're doing is we're taking our parallel lines and we're gonna slice it. So we're gonna cut it with a transversal. So I want you to take one of your colored pens or your marker or something that you have that's nice and pretty. Um, I'm going to draw over the transversal. Boop, boop. That is the transversal. Then with your pencil, okay, we are going to make our transversal and our parallel lines into a sandwich. Okay, so just follow along. Um, we are going to make our parallel lines into a sandwich. So with this top part, this is going to be the top of our hamburger bun. So with your pencil, that's like a hamburger bun. It's the top of the hamburger bun. So it's got sesame seeds. So let's put some sesame seeds. Boop, 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 boop. The bottom parallel line is the bottom of the bun. So this is going to be the bottom of my bun. Boop, 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 boop. So we're going to basically be talking about inside the parallel lines and outside the parallel lines. So anything on the inside of the sandwich where the hamburger would go is considered interior. Anything on the outside of the bun is going to be exterior. So literally think about your parallel lines as your hamburger bun. So anytime I say inside the sandwich, I mean inside the hamburger. Anytime I say exterior, I mean outside of it. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is alternate interior angles. The, the vocab is kind of like a lot. There's a lot of vocab words, but if you actually think about the words, like it makes sense. They're not completely random. So interior means on the inside of the sandwich. So I'm talking about in this section right here on the inside, alternate means on the opposite side. So using one of your colored pens or a marker or colored pencil, whatever you got, I'm gonna put a little arc mark right here. It's on the inside of the sandwich. And I'm going to make another arc mark alternating the transversal, meaning jumping over the transversal. So I'm here, I'm below the transversal. Now I'm gonna jump over the transversal and I'm gonna put a little arc mark right here. Those two angles, if you use your eyeballs, do you think that they look like they are the same measure? Like if you were just gonna glance, do they look about the same? Yeah. Yes, they are congruent. So I'm gonna put a little one and I'm gonna put a little two and off to the side, I'm gonna say angle one, is congruent to angle two. You have two sets of alternate interior angles. You have the ones we just made, and then you have the other alternate interior angles because there's two sets. So you have those ones were the obtuse angles. I'm gonna do the same thing using the other color. I have an angle right here, and I have an angle right here. They're still on the inside of the sandwich, and they are alternate, meaning they're jumping over the transversal. I'm gonna call that one angle three and angle four. Angle three and angle four are also congruent. So one pair of alternate interior angles is gonna be obtuse and one pair is going to be acute. So angle three is also congruent to angle four. Um, I'm not really using the marker to write the numbers just because it'd be like really blotchy. Um, so that's alternate, meaning jumping over. Interior means inside. We're gonna do the same thing for alternate exterior. So now you're still jumping over the transversal. You're gonna jump across, but now instead of being on the inside of the sandwich, we're gonna be on the outside of the sandwich. So I'm gonna put a little arc mark over here. Let's use green first, I guess. So I'm gonna put a little arc mark here. This angle is congruent to the opposite side, so alternate, exterior, meaning the outside. They're on the outside of the parallel lines. If I knew one of them was 50 degrees, the other one would automatically also be 50 degrees. So I'm going to call this angle one and angle two. These ones are still congruent to each other. So angle one is congruent to angle two. Anything alternate interior, anything alternate exterior has congruent pieces. The other alternate interior or exterior angles are also congruent. So I'm going to do the obtuse one matching with the obtuse one. And I'll call this one three and four. Okay. So alternate interior is inside, alternate exterior is outside. They're jumping over the line. Now we're gonna change it because now it's going to be same side interior. So last time we jumped across the transversal, this time we are not going to jump across the transversal. So using one of your markers, we're gonna go inside the parallel lines and I'm going to make a little arc mark there. 
And I'm not jumping across the transversal. It's going to be on the same side of the transversal, so down here. Now, using your eyeballs and common sense, do these two angles look like they are congruent? No. One is obtuse and one is acute. There's no way an obtuse angle and acute angle could be the same measure. So these two are going to add to make 180. They're actually supplementary. So off to the side, we're going to say angle one plus angle two equals 180. And just like before, where you have two sets of alternate interior and alternate exterior, you also have two alternate interior or two same side interior and two same side exterior. So I have those ones and I also have the other side as well. So I'm going to put it over here and over here. They're on the same side together and they're on the inside. So three and four are not congruent because I can use my eyeballs. They are definitely not the same. So they add to make 180. Okay, next one is same side exterior. So same side exterior means the same side. I'm not jumping across, but now they're on the outside of the parallel line. So outside of the sandwich. So if I choose this one, whoop, whoop, I'm not jumping across my transversal. I'm going to the same side exterior. So that's going to be right here. Now using your eyeballs, do you think that these are congruent to each other? No, they're not. One's acute, one's obtuse. So once again, these are going to add to make 180. So your same side ones always add to make 180. Your alternate ones will always be equal to each other. So we're going to call this one and call that two. And we're going to say that they add to make 180. And just like before, you have two sets. So we're going to do the other side. Same side exterior, same side exterior. They're on the outside of the sandwich. Call this one three, I'll call this one four. Angle three plus angle four equals 180. So if you think about the names, the names kind of make sense. Same side means you're not jumping. Alternate means you're jumping and it's either interior or exterior. The only one that's new that does not kind of like make sense is corresponding angles. This one's the only one that has like a random name. Corresponding angles, these are in the same exact location and just slid to the next intersection. So you actually have a bunch of corresponding angles. Um, I'm going to show you one pair and then I'll show you the other one, but we're not gonna write them all because there's a bunch. So I'm gonna put a little arc mark right here. And then I'm also going to put an arc mark in that same location, just slid down below. So right here. These two are in the same location, just on the other intersection. So these ones, do you think they're congruent or do you think they add to make 180? They are congruent. So we're going to say angle one is congruent to angle two. Now I'm gonna write in pencil on the same picture. Don't write this, okay? Um, so you also have technically uh, corresponding angles like right here, boop, boop. If I put like a little star, those are corresponding, okay? If I put a little dot here, this is corresponding to here. Um, you also have corresponding angles if I put like a little happy face here, boop, boop, and boop, boop. So you have a bunch of corresponding angles. Don't put that in your picture just cause it's gonna get a little like crazy looking but every single spot it just literally slides whatever that number is if this was 50 degrees you could slide 50 degrees here if this was 100 degrees you could slide 100 degrees here okay so there's a bunch of them now this is an old vocab word vertical angles what do vertical angles look like does anybody know or like how like would you describe them like like an x okay and then like where are the vertical angles if i create an x yeah, like top and bottom and then like side to side, okay? So vertical angles is technically old. So I'm gonna show you one set of vertical angles. I'm gonna put a little arc mark up top and then below. Those are congruent. If I know one was 50, the other one would also be 50. Um, so these are old vocab words that we're kind of can use as well. So angle one and angle two, they are congruent because of vocabulary from chapter two. Um, so they're congruent. And obviously you have a bunch of vertical angles you could use. The last one is also an old vocab word. It's a linear pair. Does anybody remember what a linear pair adds to make? 
it is an adjacent angle and it is supplementary, meaning they touch and they add to make 180. So you have a bunch of linear pairs in here. I'm going to kind of make one big arc combining these two angles. Both of those are adjacent. They're touching each other. And those two angles added together would make 180 degrees. So if I put angle one here and angle two here, they're next to each other. So they add to make 180 because they are a linear pair. So angle one plus angle two equals 180. So most of the vocab kind of like makes sense with the words. That's going to be the hard part. The math is very easy. So let's do a math problem. So let's use our big brains that I know are there somewhere. Let's go to number one. We're going to put our measurement in our picture. So it says, given the measure of angle one is 65, we're basically going to work around and find every other thing. So angle one is 65, put that in your picture. So if I wanted to find two first, what would I have to do to find two? Good. So what do I get if I subtract from 180? Somebody with a calculator. 115. Nice. So angle two is 115. And then what is their vocabulary word that connects one to two? A linear pair because they're next to each other. So this is a linear pair. Okay. So now let's look at one to three. I'm going to reference angle one every single time. So one to three Vertical angles, good. So it has to be 65 because the vertical angles are congruent. So 65, the reason why is vertical angles. I don't really have to write angles, but I, whatever. Um, what about one to four? 115, they're not corresponding. What would one and four be? linear pair so one and four you can figure out that's 115 because of vertical angles but the problem wants you to like tie it back to angle one like what's given so these are a linear pair but yes you could say like this is 115 so this is 115 okay um but we're gonna say linear pair because it's tying it back to angle one so linear pair um okay let's go to angle five what's the measure for angle five 65 Okay, and then if I think about one and five, what is the relationship between angle one and angle five? Corresponding. This is the one that's going to be used the most and probably the most important out of all of them. Corresponding angles slide from one intersection to the next intersection. So this is corresponding. So 65 degrees. Okay, what about angle six? What's that measure? 115 good and this is where like you should notice the pattern because they're all going to repeat um and then one and six technically they do not have a vocabulary word this is exterior this is interior it's actually trying to trick you so this one doesn't have a new vocab word um but we do know that they are supplementary so we're just going to write supplementary what about angle one and angle seven? First off what is seven 65, and then what is the vocab word to one and seven? So close. Alternate exterior, because they're jumping across the transversal, so they're across, but they are exterior of the sandwich. So 65, and alternate exterior. And then what about eight? What's that last number? 115. And then what kind of angles is one and eight? Same side exterior, because they're both on the outside of the sandwich, but they're both on the same side. I didn't have to jump across. So this is same side exterior. Okay, so take a second, try number two, try to just fill in the numbers. See if you can fill in the numbers and then we'll do the vocabulary part together. So it gives you angle six. So fill in six and try to figure out everything else because it's like a puzzle. It literally, the numbers repeat. So you have a 50-50 chance, either one number or the other number.
So all the obtuse angles should be the same. All the acute angles should be the same. So what's going to be one? One, 42. Good. What about two? 38. What about three? 142. Good. What about four? 38. What about five? 38. We already got six. What about seven? And then eight. 142. So if you haven't already, put your numbers in this little section and then we'll do the vocab together because the vocab is the new part. That's the hard part. The numbers are super easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, 142, 38, 38, 38, and 142. Okay. So last time we were tying it back to the given angle, which was angle one. This time we're tying it back to angle six. So if we're looking at angle one and angle six, what kind of angles are they? Vertical. That should be an easy one. Vertical. Okay. What about angle six and angle two? Linear pair because they're right next to each other. They add to make a straight line. So linear pair. Angle six and angle three. They're both on the inside of the sandwich. Good. Alternate interior because you do jump across the transversal. So it's alternate interior. Angle six and angle four. One's inside and one's outside. So are they both interior? Are they both exterior? Are they corresponding? So this is the weirdo. This is like, they don't technically. Nope, they're not same side exterior. Um, this is like the weirdo where technically it's not a vocab word. It's just supplementary. What's up? Nope. Because this one is inside, this one's outside. So just like last time there was like that one tricky one, this one is the one tricky one because one's inside, one's outside. So they're not same side interior. They're not same side exterior. They're not alternate interior because they're not both inside. They're not both exterior. So this one's just supplementary. So it's literally that to trick you. Um, what about six and five? Linear, good. What about six and seven? Same side interior. Good, because it's on the inside of the sandwich and they didn't jump over the line. So same side interior. And then um, six and eight. Nope, not supplementary. Nope, not vertical. Corresponding, which is the one that they're going to use the most. Um. Probably because it's the only one that doesn't have like a connection to the vocabulary words. Like you can't like use your brain to think about it. Okay, let's go to the back. Let's do some actual math. So starting with numero, um, let's do let's do number seven. Okay, the first thing that you're going to need to do is determine what kind of vocabulary word this is referencing. Alternate interior. Look at you. So we have this one and we have this one. They are on the inside of the sandwich and they're jumping over the line. So they are not same side, they are alternate interior. So your first thing you're gonna do on the back is write the vocab word. So alternate interior angles, okay? Now, should you, you have a 50-50 chance. Should you equal them to each other or should you add to make 180? Equal them to each other because they're both obtuse angles. So they are congruent. So you're going to equal them to each other. So take a second, solve your problem. I'm not going to do it for you. You can solve equations. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Add 21 to both sides. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy.
So what did we get? 12. Should have been 12. Um, okay, should have been 12 because I added 21 to both sides. I'm going to move this really quickly, but I'll show you. I added 21 and I subtracted 5x, so you should get 12 as your answer. You don't have to plug it back in because if you plug it back in, though, if you did plug it back in, these two answers should be the same whatever you get, okay? Um, let's go to number four. So number four, a lot of people get tripped up on this just because it's got a little arrow. So people think that this number is actually out here. This is actually on the inside, okay? This angle's right here. This angle's right here, okay? So in reference to our vocabulary, they are not corresponding. They would be corresponding if this was actually right here, but it's not because the arrow. Same side interior because they're both on the inside of the sandwich and they're both actually above the transversal. They're not jumping across. So what am I going to do if they're same side interior? Add them to make 180. So you do have 9x plus 2 plus 133 equals 180. So for the rest of these, okay, you're going to first figure out your vocab word that goes with it, and then you're going to solve for X. You do not have to plug it back in. And then let me know if you get stuck. Let me know if you need help. It's not terrible. I promise. And if you set it to make 180 and you get a decimal, you probably did it wrong. So set them equal to each other because there's only two ways to do it. You either add to make 180. Or they equal to each other. So look at the picture. If one's obtuse and one's acute, and they add to make 180. If they're both acute, they equal each other. What's up? No, just find X. That's fine. Well, the rest 